mentioned, I'm Joy, um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about my transition into management and back again. Uh, so first of all, just I'm going to talk about who I am, um, why I went into management, why I left management, a little bit about my transition, and then a little bit about the knowledge I was able to transfer between the two. Um, so first of all, who am I? Uh, so I, I like to blog. I have a blog on Medium. Um, I really like reading, especially fantasy, thus the uh, title of this talk. I like to bake, especially pies. And I like to run, especially long distances on trails. But that's probably not what you guys care about. So who am I professionally? Again, I like to blog. So I, I tend to blog about running, but also a lot about DEI topics, as well as actual technical topics, and a little bit about career mixed in there as well. In fact, a blog post about this exact topic was kind of what got me started on this. So you can find all kinds of stuff on there. Um, I've worked at a variety of places. I'll get into this a little more in a minute. Uh, I'm a back-end engineer. I currently work mostly in Java, but I've done a bunch of other things in the past. Uh, I've done a lot of work around microservices and splitting up microservices and microservice design, some of that kind of stuff. Um, I've also spent a lot of time on REST APIs and uh, designing them and standards around them. And I've also done a lot with authorization. Uh, currently, I'm working on an authorization service, and we're utilizing OPA uh, for that. That's the, the symbol here. Um, okay, so let's, I'm going to mostly talk a little bit about my transition in my career. So what did my career look like? I started off as a software development engineer at Microsoft. Um, from there, I went to a really tiny startup uh, where I had to do everything because I was one of two engineers. Um, from there, I moved to Box, where I was hired as a senior software engineer, or sorry, as a software engineer. I then got promoted to a senior software engineer at Box. And then I moved into this role that at Box we called the TLM or Tech Lead Manager, which is sort of a transition role between uh, IC and management. And the idea was that it wasn't an actual promotion, but it was sort of this acknowledgement that you were making this transition. So someone who was a TLM could be doing anything from basically IC work with like a little bit of project management or something like that thrown in all the way to they're doing basically all of the management of a team, except for the actual final sign off by the official manager at the time. So kind of spans a wide range. Uh, from there, I got promoted into being an engineering manager. And at some point I decided I didn't like it. So I moved back to the IC side as a staff engineer and then got promoted again to senior staff engineer, still at Box. And as you can see, I was at Box for quite a while. So I decided I needed to try something different. And that's when I moved to Split a couple of years ago. So this is kind of my overall journey. And I'm really gonna focus on this middle part. So moving over to manager and then back again to IC. So why did I go into management in the first place? Um, so a lot of it, was around some of the, the skills I was showing at the time. Um, there were a lot of largely grouped under leadership skills. Uh, so things like project management, um, I actually hate doing this. So it, nowadays, if you have me managing a project, I'll probably do a terrible job, but <laughs> I am actually pretty good at it if I want to be. So being able to manage timelines, manage dependencies, a lot of that kind of stuff, um, motivating the people around me, getting everybody excited and moving in the same direction. Um, leading discussions and making sure that we're actually making progress and we're not just coming back to the same discussion over and over again. So recording our decisions and why. Um, seeing the big picture. So uh, Myers-Briggs was mentioned earlier. I'm one of the people who sees, sees the forest and not so much the trees. You obviously need both on a team. But in this particular case, uh, seeing the forest was helpful in terms of seeing what things we might be forgetting about or how our projects fit into the larger picture or how things might fit together better. Um, so that was kind of what was helpful there. Um, communication. So as I mentioned, I like to blog and I clearly also give, <laughs> give talks. So communication was one of the things that I was fairly good at. Um, and then another piece, everybody so far has talked about mentors. Uh, so at the time I had a mentor who sat me down and was like, Joy, you need to go into management. And I was like, I don't know. I've never seen myself as a manager. I, I don't really know if I'd like it. It's kind of big and scary and different. And he was like, no, like these are all things you're good at. You really should try it. You really should see. 
I still wasn't quite sure, so I talked to a second mentor and I, I kind of laid it out for her and she was like, no, you should really try this, you should do it. Uh, like, what's the worst that could happen? You won't know whether or not you actually like it until you try it. So I went ahead and went into it. So why did I leave management? Short story, I hated it. <laughs> but, but more specifically, why? Um, so I'm gonna kind of get into three questions here that I asked myself and sort of helped me quantify, qualify why I left management. Uh, these actually overlap quite a bit with what John was just talking about uh, as it happens. But um, yeah, so the first thing is around what gives you energy or what drains you. And it turned out that a lot of the things that drain me tend to be on the management side. So uh, I'm an introvert and a lot of man <laughs> management is interviewing, at least at a software company, this tends to be the case. And I find that especially one-on-one -on -one conversations with total strangers are things that really stress me out. And I'm not the best at small talk, so this in general is just not a great situation for me. Um, giving feedback. Uh, so as I quickly discovered, uh, everybody on my team was a little different and some people took feedback really well, some people did not, and some people, which were actually kind of the worst, like fell on both ends of the spectrum. And it was really hard to tell where they were gonna end up. And so wanting to be able to give the right level of feedback that was both uh, taken seriously, but not like freaking somebody out was really stressful for me trying to figure out that balance. Um, micro communications. So I mentioned that I like communication and I'm pretty good at it, but I like writing like a blog post and then sitting on it for a little while to make sure I have the right um, angle, right? Like I want to make sure the tone is right. I want to make sure that it can't be misinterpreted and I want to think about it for a little while. And then I make some tweaks and then I post it. But the thing is, as a manager, you're constantly giving small presentations. You're constantly writing emails to people um, all across the board. You have to talk to people more senior than you, people more junior than you, and like just all over the place. And while I could do these, all of these things, I found that it was stressful for me to let go of that being able to make sure I always had the right tone and like taking the time to do that because I just didn't have the time for that. And again, sort of similar to the interviewing, but as a manager, if you tried to schedule time with any manager, you know that their schedule is just packed. It's like solid meetings because they're trying to organize things with other teams and all this other stuff. And so again, as an introvert, I found that very draining. By the way, this isn't to say that introverts can't make wonderful managers. I know a few. So if you're an introvert, you can still make a great manager. Don't take this to be that, but I did find that part draining. So what gives me energy? Um, doing stuff on my own, reading, uh, working on my own. Um, but I don't hate people either. So actually I find working with a small trusted group, so like my immediate team, uh, to be really energizing, especially if we're solving a hard problem together. I really love that collaboration and talking to each other and bouncing ideas off each other. Um, and I like finishing things. Uh, so I have a picture of a runner here since I'm a runner, but I really mean like finishing a project, um, fixing a bug, shipping, shipping a feature, you know, that kind of thing. I love, I love that feeling of being done. Okay, so my next question is what drives and excites you? And this initially sounds a lot like what gives you energy, um, but the subtle difference here is I like to talk about running. So like in a race, uh, especially a really long race, there are gonna be low points. There are gonna be times when you're hot and you're tired and everything hurts and you just don't wanna continue and it's terrible, but you continue because of that feeling at the end and like the, the feeling of finishing, the feeling of accomplishment. And um, that's why I sign up for another race again, right? So that's sometimes the end goal can be more important than the individual little things along the way. So what we're what were my end goals? What really is the thing that I'm aiming for in the bigger picture? So for me, it's I really like helping people, um, whether that's mentorship, uh, whether that's uh, solving problems for our customers, whether that's giving a talk like this. I like trying to know that I might be helping people out there. So this, this actually kind of applies to both management and an IC role. Um, I really like building things. I like the feeling of creation. I like uh, having something that I've I've made out there in the world. A little more on the IC side. And I like solving really hard problems. Um, I like stretching my brains to its limits, uh, especially with people, as I mentioned. And don't get me wrong, there are definitely very, very challenging problems on the people side, but that's 
not quite the type of problem I like to solve. I like a little bit more technical problems. Um, I don't know how to quite quantify that, but I'm sure some of you can relate. So as you can see, it leans a little more towards the IC side on this in terms of what drives and excites me. Finally, the last thing is around how you feel accomplishment. Um, it turns out that on the management side, you do a lot of things like moving around calendars, uh, cheering on your team, uh, coaching them, uh, shielding them from outside interruptions, uh, clearing the path so that they have an easy way forward and they can just heads down work and you know, managing dependencies and working with other teams. Meanwhile, on the IC side, you see a lot more of, um, actually this falls on both sides, <laughs> mentorship. So helping, helping other people grow in their careers one-on-one, this really does fall on both sides. Um, working on code, like actually writing the things uh, and fixing bugs, right? Obviously there's much more on both sides, but just high level, those are some of the big things. And I found that on the management side, it's, it's less clear the line between what you do and uh, the outcomes, right? Like I might have argued for us, my team to work on project X instead of project Y and I got it accomplished and we did an amazing job on problem project X, but like, was that the right choice? It's really hard to tell, right? Or um, I, I worked hard and motivated my team, got rid of all the obstacles and they really knocked this project out of the park, but maybe they're all amazing engineers and would have done it even without me, right? And um, meanwhile, on the IC side, it's, it's much clearer, right? You, you fixed a bug. You, you uh, wrote, wrote this amount of code for this feature. It's, it's very clear what you did and how that impacts the long-term thing. And I think we all know that it's not that great managers don't do a lot, right? Like I have, I've had many great managers and there's a big difference between a great manager and a terrible manager. And so obviously they're doing a lot and they're really helpful. But, and I knew this in my head, but I really had a really hard time internalizing this. So even though I knew that I was uh, creating impact and actually doing things that helped my team, it didn't feel like that on the inside. So I found, I felt like I was just in like a hamster wheel, just spinning, right? Like I felt like I was doing all this work and not getting anywhere. So that, that's sort of why, what I picked there. So switching back, um, I just have one thing I really want to talk about here. And that is that a lot of the people I talked to at the time, and this was a fear of mine as well, was that they were really worried that they would lose their technical edge. Like they wouldn't be technical enough to be a developer again if they went into management. And I'm gonna be honest, so I, I got a little bit lucky in that I managed to switch back to the dev side at a company that I've been at. So I, even though I hadn't been in the code for a couple of years, I did have the background. I knew the general architecture, I knew the general patterns and all that kind of stuff. So it was pretty easy to pick up again. And then the other side I wanna mention is that technology is always changing. It's changing really fast and switching companies, even as a developer, it's often very different. So. We, we all kind of learn to learn anyway. And so if you've accomplished this even a little bit, it's not that hard to switch back. Um, on top of that, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so <laughs> we all learn. So that's, that's a great thing uh, about that. So it's, it's really not that hard. Okay, finally, transferable skills. It turns out that both the management IC tracks, as you move up the ladders, uh, it increases in both scope and influence. And this, this comes out in that there's a lot of things that are very similar between the two. So first thing is uh, setting visions or direction. So on the IC or on the management side, you're setting the direction for your team, right? You're creating the backlog, the projects they're gonna work on. On the IC side, you're setting the, the technical vision. You're saying, this is the architecture we're aiming towards. These are the microservices we wanna have, and this is how we're gonna get there. Once you've set this vision, obviously you need to convince other people to come along for the ride with you. So on both the management and the, the technical side, you need to be able to influence those around you. Then you need to be able to communicate that plan to other people. So being able to talk about it, being able to write about it, um, I already mentioned this before, but mentoring, being able to grow the people around you is expected on both sides. Uh, and then understanding people and empathy. So this comes out in two aspects. So the first is just as I worked with a bunch of different people, I learned more about what motivates people and how people are um, influenced and motivated to do things. And that helped me in, in order to align incentives correctly, in order to get people aligned 
and help uh, with my influencing skills that I just mentioned. And then the other side is as a former manager, I had some insight into what, what the challenges of being a manager were, as well as some of the processes and some things along those lines. So I was able to better help my own manager to help me. So um, that also helped me uh, get better on that side of things. So this part was really important as well. And then I just have one final thought, and that is that a lot of people talk about a career ladder, um, but more and more, I'm sure almost all of you, if not all of you, have heard of people talking about a career lattice as well. And while I only really made one horizontal move over and back, um, I do know a bunch of people who have moved back and forth between IC and management a number of times. And like IC might be right for you, management right, might be right for you, or this mix might be right for you. So that's all I had.